what makes us dead? Sin, right? So now, as a doctor, we understand the reason why we need revival is because of the three-letter word. What is that? Sin. Now, that makes us dead, right? So now we're asserting the cause as a doctor. Now, the reason why we are dead is because of sin. Now we can give something to the church so that we may be revived. That's why Ellen White said the church needed victory over sin. Are you following so far? So when sin is taken out, there's a genuine revival. If sin is still present in people's lives, there will be no genuine revival, friends. Because genuine revival only be attained when there's victory over sin. This is the, the reason why we needed revival. We needed to have <coughs> victory over sin. Have you ever gone to your church and saying, oh, my AY are dead, my our AY is dead, it's boring, you know what I mean? Like, oh, the church is dying. Have you ever, have you ever heard people saying like that? Yeah. Oh, the church is dying. You know what's the solution? Victory over sin. Well, we are, think about that. We, I'm, so, I'm so passionate about this because I've heard so many people. Our church is dying. Bring the drums in the church. Bring, bring entertainment. Let's do dramas in the church. Why not, right? Let's put game shows in the church. Let's do this in the church. We are all putting all these gimmicks in the church. We're in, in, the, in, in, in the real sense, my dear friends, we just need victory over sin. The reason why our church is dying is because we don't have victory over sin in our life. My friends, I'll tell you the truth. No matter how you change the program in your church, if people are still playing with their sin, they will never enjoy church. They will never enjoy church. This is the main topic that I'll talk to you, my dear friends. It will still be continually dying. Friends, you will never enjoy church if you're still watching those movies in the world. Still listening to those music from the world. Why? And that's why, by the way, we fall asleep every time in the church. You know why? Because when I speak here, there's no explosions in my back, right? There's no explosion. No one's kissing. No one's having a bed scene. There's no stimulation in the mind. That's why you're always bored in the church. That's why the call for the people is victory over sin. And that's the main topic that I'm going to talk about. The end time work as move forward. But some preachers are very scared to do this. Uh, very scared to talk about this topic. But actually we are called to preach about this topic. In fact, let me give you this. Spiritual Gifts, page 284. Ellen White said, Preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth as it's found in God's word. Let the truth, what everyone? Let the truth cut. Now, notice, let the truth cut, not untactfulness that cuts. Let me repeat that again. Many people are so untactful when they approach people who tell the truth that it cuts, not the truth. So let the truth cut, the word of the truth, not your mouth that condemns people. It's the truth that hurts them. Are you following so far? It says, I have been shown that why ministers have not more success is... They are afraid of hurting feelings. Tired of being hurting feelings. Fearful of not being courteous. And they lower the standard of truth and conceal if possible the peculiarity of our faith. Do we see that happening today? We don't want to preach the truth because it might hurt people and they may not give tithes to us. Many pastors are doing that. It's recorded. I might be in trouble. But anyways, <laughs> let's proceed. We need to tell people the truth, friends. And what you're going to hear today in this seminar, we may not like it, and we might lose our friendship. But I'm telling you the truth, that what I'm telling you today is the truth. But it might hurt you. Is that okay? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. They can still be friends in Facebook, amen? <laughs> Let's proceed. It says, I saw that God could not make such successful. The truth may be made pointed, and the necessity of a decision must be urged. And as Paul Shepherd are crying peace and are preaching what everyone? Smooth things. So in other words, if you're preaching smooth things, you are a false shepherd. She said, the servants of God might cry aloud and spare not and leave the result to God. Preach the truth and let the result be given to God, my dear friends. We need to preach the truth, friends. Um, okay. Bible is the book of 2 Samuel chapter 18. 2 Samuel chapter 18. As we build up and we go to the main topic, I just want to give you some more thoughts why this is important. Uh, this section here, I 
entitled it A Messenger Without a Message. A Messenger Without a Message. And we'll slide into the end time work as we move forward. Second Samuel chapter 18. And if you're there, let me know by saying amen. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 18. Please, my dear friends, as you study, give me that seal as a young person. We're all young here, amen? We're not amen. senior citizens. You know, this church, my dear friends, is organized and made by young people. Did you know that? How many of you here knows that? This church was organized and made by young people. In fact, God has given us a blessing. Before I go into this, I just want to give you some energy. Psalms 127. Go to Psalms 127. Psalms 27. Sorry, I don't have any outlines in my sermon, so I go everywhere. 127, my dear friends. And if you're there, let me know by saying amen. God has given us this wonderful thing. Psalms 127. Are you there, amen? Amen. Let's tell your people's pages turning. Psalms in the, is in the Old Testament, by the way. Psalms 127, beginning at verse 3. Beginning at verse 3. The Bible said, Law, children, a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his what, everyone? Reward. His reward. Now notice that. Children, you and me, are a blessing from the Lord to their parents. Now let me ask you this question. Are you a blessing to your parents or are you a problem? Yes. <laughs> a blessing. Okay, how many of you are a problem in the house? No. I remember when I was a teenager, I was I used to be a problem in the house because when my mom when my mom washes the dishes, I'm just watching my TV, playing PlayStation. My father would go on the the, the the area of our house and I was just there sleeping. I was a problem. Any of you here doing Facebook, chatting with your friends while your mom and dad is cleaning the house, you're a problem in the house. Let me ask you again. Are you a problem in the house? Don't answer me. But we should be, should be a blessing in the church and in the house, amen? But significant thing that David said here is in the next verse. It says, as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Did you understand that? She said, as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Young people, you are described in the Bible as an arrows of God's church. No, amen. 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 No, amen. <laughs> but my dear friends, What's an arrow? Is an arrow an offensive tool or a defensive weapon? Offensive, offensive or defensive? Offensive. It's an offensive tool, right? It is used to, to attack the enemy. That means you are God's offensive weapon. And Satan knows that. That's why he is afraid. He is afraid of a generation where they could stand up and become God's offensive weapon. Satan knows that, my dear friends. That's why you need to ask yourself, who is the most distracted part of our society in the church? You don't see your grandma playing Facebook in the church. You don't see your grandfather or your mom playing COC in the church, is it? It's all the young people who are all distracted with this worldly music, the things of the world, the fashions in the world. Why? Because Satan knows that. That's why he's feeding all the things for all of you. Why? Because this church is organized by young people and it will be finished by young people. Luther Warren, my dear friends, 14 years old, organized the Adventist Youth Society. That's what we call AY program today. 14 years old. Where are those young people today? John Harvey Kellogg became the first president of the first Battle Creek Sanitarium in Battle Creek at the age of 23. 23 years old, leader, Battle Creek Sanitarium. When they said, who is the most able man who would lead the hospital? He stood up and said, I'm able, 23 years old, John Harvey Kellogg. I'm 25, I'm already late. I'm not leading hospital. <laughs> uh, remember, Jane Andrews became one of the first men who identified Revelation 13, second beast as America, when he was 26 years old. He was an editor of Adventist Review. He was a very good writer. He could memorize the New Testament word for word in seven different languages. Where are those young people today? James White became an ordained minister at the age of 22, and he baptized 1,000 souls in winter. Winter. I'll repeat that again. Winter. We don't have winter in the Philippines. But if you think about winter, that's snow. That's very cold. Yet he's doing Bible working. 22 years old. Where are those young people today? I want you to sink that in in your mind. Because you might be saying, I'm already old. I'm too late. I mean, I'm too young. No, my dear friends, our young people before, Uriah Smith was just 12 years old when 1844 Great Disappointment happened. And yet you are singing most of our hymns in our hymnal written by 12 years old Uriah Smith. 12 years old. Where are 
those young people today. We're all distracted, my dear friends. We need to focus. So I'm asking you to please give more energy. You're too young, amen? amen. You're still young. Let's proceed. 2 Samuel chapter 18. Getting away from my topic. 2 Samuel chapter 18 now. And if you're there, let me know they sing amen. 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 2 Samuel chapter 18. The story told, my dear friends, that David has a son. And his son is very rebellious. What was his name? Absalom. Absalom. The story was told that Absalom was running away from the armies of Joab. And he had him...